The story of Chateau Champs sur Marne is not a simple one and starts with a troubling series of events. On September 1st, 1715, Louis XIV died and almost immediately, Paul Poisson de Bourveille, accused of financial embezzlement, was imprisoned in Bastille. To avoid death penalty and in turn for his freedom, the financier made a proposal to the regent, who was a tutor of the young King Louis XV, and offered to give up his estate that was composed of nearly 2,000 hectares of land, area greater than Paris in 1700. Champs sur Marne was offered along with the mansion on Place Vendôme that hosts the Ministry of Justice today. In November 1718, Princess de Conti, who was daughter of Louis XIV and Mademoiselle de la Vallier, acquired the domain de Champs. Widowed and childless, she adored her maternal cousin, Charles François de la Baume Leblanc. From 1739 to 1763, the chateau was occupied by Duke Louis César de la Vallier, the eldest son of Charles François. Louis César, close to Louis XV, also happened to be a friend of the Marquise de Pompadour. She rented the chateau from 1757 to 1759 and Louis XV came to visit her there. Having great interest in literature, the Duke often received Voltaire and Madame du Châtelet at Champs sur Marne. Voltaire infinitely appreciated this chateau. But the maintenance of all his fields, his expansive taste for books, but also for easy and libertine life, will gradually ruin Louis César. In August 1763, Le Duc de la Vallière sold his estate to Gabriel Michel de Saron. It is his daughter, Marquise de Marbeuf, who was at the chateau during the French Revolution, and even though she was attentive to the well-being of all of her staff and the inhabitants of the estate, she still lost her life there in 1793. After the death of the Marquise, the revolutionary state emptied the chateau of all of its furniture. In 1800s, at the beginning of the empire, the Duke of Lévy, who was a nephew of Marquis de Marbeuf, was restored to his rights as a French citizen. He found the use of the family chateau of Champs and Noisil. From 1831 to 1895, the chateau of Champs became bourgeois. In the absence of regular maintenance, the building lost much of its glory. However, it must be noted that thanks to Jacques Maurice Grosjean, from 1831 to 1858, and Ernest Santerre with his son Sebastian, from 1858 to 1895, the chateau was saved from almost certain destruction. By 1895, the bankers Louis and Louis Cohen of Antwerp acquired the 600 hectare estate and launched a deep restoration of the chateau and the park. Walter de Steyer, the architect, was hired for the restoration. On the plans of the 18th century, he had the attic rebuilt and restored all the rooms with the greatest respects for the arts of the time. The building was also electrified and a more modern heating system was installed. The pieces of 18th century furniture brought together by the Cahan family of Antwerp to complete and still furnish the castle today. They are signed by the greatest names in the cabinet making of the epoch. This is easily one of the most beautiful chateaus that I've visited so far because of its interiors and the design itself is just gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. You can see a lot of thought and taste has gone into this chateau. It's absolutely gorgeous. There were a couple of rooms in the top floor that had the uh, Toile de Jouy. It's the same thing that we had the episode on. The fabric that has the prints on them. So there were two rooms there that had that fabric and I absolutely loved it. By the way, if you haven't watched that episode, you can check it up here. It's an interesting one. We went to the museum that explains how this fabric came to be, what influenced it and what happened and why it's still being used even today. And uh, yeah, so I mean, this is just absolutely gorgeous. This chateau is just, I love, I love it. I love it. I love it. On the park side, it is transformed to follow the fashion of the mixed garden. Henri and Achille Duchesne created the novelty by keeping part of the regular French garden with its embroidery and perspectives, while all around the park escapes into a natural garden of an English type. So unfortunately we didn't have any guided tour, but Chateau itself is very pretty. There are so many small rooms, but my favorite one was the music room. I don't know why, but this place reminds me of Chateau de Maison. It was winter when we visited that chateau and I really liked it. So we are very lucky to have this fountain working. Normally they don't turn it on. And I believe after the rain, they decided to turn it on. I wish we could just have picnic here, but it was so rainy in the morning. 
we will rush in to make it to the shuttle by 3 p.m. So yeah. From 1959 to 1974, the shuttle was the residence of foreign heads of state on an official visit to France. Since 1974, the shuttle has been permanently open to the public. It's not that far from Paris, you just take a few lines and that's it and you're done. Actually you take one line and then a bus. And uh, it's only 8 euros to enter for the regular ticket, uh, free for people to under 26. And you know, see, it's, it's channels like ours, it's where we tell you and show you where to go and how to spend your time outside of the usual tourism path, you know, like you don't have to go to Versailles all the time. If you are in France, you can come here. If you are visiting Paris and you have a few more days, you can visit places like this. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe. So that's it for today. We hope you liked this episode. If you would like to see more of this content, please don't forget to like, share and comment below. Until next one, au revoir. Thank you.